James Kaufman, World News Report today, August 17th, 2024. God bless you and yours, no matter where you are in the world. Please subscribe, give us a thumbs up, ring that bell for critical future updates. Ladies and gentlemen, we're currently in a G3 strong geomagnetic storm. We were expecting this midday on the 17th. This was generated by several M flares and the X 1.1 solar flare that all occurred on August 14th. We will take a look at those eruptions. Now, again, the big flare of the 14th was the X 1.11 solar flare directly earth facing that generated a coronal mass ejection that we knew was inbound. We also had a couple of M flares that, well, appeared to be earth facing and very well could have generated coronal mass ejections as well. We're checking our estimated planetary KP index, the upgraded version used by NASA NOAA currently. We're in again strong G3 geomagnetic storm conditions with a 6.67, and that's from 1500 to 1800 UTC time, although it appears that the CME hit us right around 1330 or 1400 UTC. All right, we can see those KP indexes all indicating the same thing, geomagnetic storm, and they're all set right at 7. Our college index is a KP7 which is a G3 strong geomagnetic storm. Our estimated planetary is 6.67. It looks like the Fredericksburg KP index is a KP6, which would be a G2 moderate geomagnetic storm, along with the Boulder KP index. Although the estimated planetary KP index is the updated version, the version used by NOAA and NASA. We can further verify this impact with our GO-16 magnetometer. It just took a dive, folks. A really strong hit. They said it would be a G1, at least they expected a G1, mild geomagnetic storm. Looks like maybe it was a stronger coronal mass ejection than thought, or several of the M flares may have actually produced coronal mass ejections that join the X-class flares CME. Let's not screw around and see what we have here. Our shields were down all day. They said that we got hit about 1330. You can see the shields are down here. You can see the impact. Plasma shooting up from 1.82 uh, and 1.92. And we had some well, decent 26.44. Now, there's steps to this, which tells me that there was more than one impact. We're dealing with plasma at 62 centimeters cubed. And I'm guessing we might see something higher than that. A very strong CME as far as plasma. Winds have not peaked over 500 kilometers per second yet, but they started down at 224, and they are very, very close to 500 kilometers per second. You can see that our temperatures went up with plasma like they were supposed to, but on this second step of plasma, it shoots up so high to 61 centimeters cubed to 60. There's a bigger reading in there if we can just get it. 61.80 centimeters cubed. We see the temperature dropping off, which makes absolutely no sense. We do see our shields starting to come up and try to protect Earth. But right now, we're in heavy plasma. And this is right now, as you can see. This drop in temperature makes absolutely zero sense as the plasma increases and pounds the Discover satellite. We should see the temperature also increase. Now, I don't like how the solar winds are moving exactly with the plasma. 
They should have been pushed ahead of the plasma in most cases that we see. Let's continue. All right, both NASA and NOAA is giving credit to the X1.11 solar flare here, on the 14th, although we really had three strong M flares as well. Really one late on the 13th into the 14th and two more on the 14th. So this could be a 1, 2, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 4 punch. And did Noah completely blow this? Completely, ladies and gentlemen. So they have no plasma whatsoever under 10 centimeters cubed all day on the 17th. They were talking late into the 17th, early into the 18th. Most models agreed on the 18th. I told y'all it would be here on the 17th. Bingo, right as usual. And then they have plasma inbound. Looks like they're expecting two chrome mass ejections. I think we've just seen them. But the second one doesn't even reach 22 centimeters of plasma cubed. Well, we're at over 60 centimeters cubed of plasma. Down to the solar winds. We're right at 500. This has it all day long at 300 kilometers per second. With a bump up tomorrow on the 18th to 400 kilometers per second. The problem is, is we're at 500 kilometers per second. And we started the day at 400 kilometers per second. So they get an F minus. And this is a brand new model that we just paid to upgrade. I don't know why. Obviously, since these are events are so far down, they have not redone this in numerous days. All right, ladies and gentlemen, NOAA has just published August 17th at 18.05 UTC time, this G3 warning, i.e. they had no idea it was inbound, especially at these levels and especially today. Strong geomagnetic storm alert. The geomagnetic field reached the G3 level at 17, 17.46 UTC time. What is a strong geomagnetic storm? A large disturbance in Earth's magnetic field. It often varies in intensity between lower levels and strong storm conditions over the course of hours during the duration of the event. What should you do? Those under or near the 30-minute predicted auroral extent may look for the auroras if at night and should weather conditions permit. Why do they want us out there staring at radiation? Possible technological effects. Infrastructure operators have been notified to mitigate any possible impacts. Some risk for controllable power fluctuations in the power grid possible. Slight risk of various satellite operations affected. Intermittent GPS degradation possible. Again, just published at 1805 because they weren't expecting anything but a G1 tomorrow. We have a G3 today. Talk about a late warning, G3. Strong geomagnetic storm levels have been reached at 1746 UTC time, which is right around 1, about an hour ago. And due to the influence from a coronal mass ejection associated with an X flare that left the sun on August 14th, stay tuned for updates. God bless you and yours, folks. They're not very good at predicting anything, period. Please share, subscribe, and always remember, anything's possible in Bizarro World.